In what order do you recommend one to watch the videos to become a strong and structured hadith disciple? Because the channel is an ocean and I can't swim. Tayyip. Question comes from Go- Gothenburg, yeah. Germany. Sweden. Yeah. Sweden. A new disciple. Which videos should we watch first to become a strong and structured student of knowledge and disciple? There are a lot of videos on the channel, so on and so forth. May Allah bless you and bless all of the disciples and disciples in Sweden. I mean, uh, welcome to the channel. May Allah keep you firm. Uh, I would say to start off with, if you, if you wanted to start off with something, start off with 40 hadith Nawi. Start off with the 40 hadith on seeking knowledge. All right? That's going to help you be the night to have a structure. Inshallah ta'ala. Once you go through those videos and you watch them a few times and you take the many benefits and the structure and the usul and the qawait of 40 hadith, come back to us and we'll send you on another playlist. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. And Allah knows best. Last but not least, is that hadith disciple is not necessarily meant for you to do with other, do away with other channels. And then you can't watch no other videos and you can't read other books. Doesn't mean that. But one of the main purposes of a Hadith Disciple is to brainwash you. To clean away the filth and the sediment. Huh? To wash it. Empty the cup. And to open up your eyes for you to do what? See how to properly study now. I learned the philosophy from a Hadith Disciple. Now I go to another brother's channel and he has this structured class. But now I know how to do it now. Better. I know I don't need this video. Take this. Do this. And learn it like that. Repeat it 30 times. He said just read it twice. But I learned on Hadith Disciple do what? 30 times. Everyone understand this? So it's a very important concept of a Hadith Disciple. Is that it's not always about the specific uh, content. But it's about the philosophy. The mindset. How to think like a talib al-ilm. How to think critically. Alright? If you take, alhamdulillah, and it's not bragging. But if you take the, the techniques that we use in the explanations of the Hadiths. You can use that what? Anywhere. You can read any book of Hadith. You can listen to any lecture. You can listen to any audio book and do what? Systematically deduce it and break it down. Let alone the videos in which we do teach you structured things. And do teach mutun and finish books from cover to what? Cover. But that's not, that's, that's not the main purpose. The main purpose is the what? The akliya. That's the thing that's going to be internal. That's the thing which the younger brothers, inshallah, they carry on the next generation. And then they'll come behind and say, Muhammad Munir, he made these mistakes on his channel. May Allah forgive him. We're not making those mistakes. But he was our teacher to teach us what? Disciplism. Or he didn't live long enough to cover this book. Now we're going to what? Cover it. Or this is uncharted ground that he didn't get to. We're going to do what? Get to it. But he taught us the what? I don't understand this. And this is extremely important in life. Take for example, Genghis Khan. Did he conquer the entire world? No, he didn't. He conquered a lot. But he didn't conquer the entire world. And his grandson, Kublai Khan, conquered more than he did. And he branched off more than he branched off. And he did many things that his grandfather probably couldn't imagine and think of. But whose philosophy did he have? Who sparked off the way that he thought and launched his military campaigns? Was who? Genghis. Are you understanding this? It wasn't Genghis's job to do what? To do every single thing for Kublai. It was his job to what? impregnate his mind with the proper way of looking at it. And then he does what? The rest. Everyone understand this concept here? I hope you guys can understand the words that I'm mentioning. Wallahu alam.